series, Robocop, from where I first came to know about robots. In my childhood, I had the habit of reading science fiction stories and watching uh, science fiction movies. I guess from there, I first got interested in robotics. When I got admitted into mechanical engineering, I found that uh, I had to memorize big, big theories and even calculations for securing handsome amount of CGPF. <laughs> but uh, the real fun lies on utilizing them. So one day I was sitting with Rakib and both of us were discussing about how to utilize these theories, how to make a machine of our own. And then we thought, why not making robots just for fun? So the very next day, uh, Rocky bought two Metallic Gear motor and I managed an igloo ice cream box from my fridge. <laughs> and watch how we turned the igloo ice cream box into a real line tracking chassis. <laughs> Within a month, uh, we managed to make an advanced line tracking robot with our own PCB circuit board and uh, using two nylon shafts, we managed to make wheels by our own hand. After watching this robot, many of our friends visited our home lab. We got a mini lab at our home at that time. And our friends were uh, so much interested, many known and unknown persons. They met us expressing their interest on how to make robots. So uh, to help them, we launched a training program on robotics. On 5th April 2012, at Agrabah Chittagong, we launched the country's first robotic venture, and that's Planet of Bangladesh. <laughs> Our training program included basic robot programming, circuitry knowledge, and making simple mechanical structure. Using this basic knowledge, our student makes, uh, made their own robots by their own hands under our guideline. To us, happiness is watching the dazzling eyes of our student and their confident face after making their own robot. We thought for expansion. So, on 16 January 2013, we launched our second training center on Ajimpur, Dhaka. What were the specialities that attracted the robot enthusiasts of Bangladesh? Uh, people from various institutions uh, used to come to take uh, this training program courses. And when they enrolled the training program, we observed their IQ level. And according to their le that IQ level, we used to deliver them lectures to make it convenient. And when they were working at home, uh, if they need any kind of support, we were available at Facebook, or they uh, used to call up via Skype calls, and that's how we continued our training program. And uh, that's how students from different institutions in Bangladesh gathered on one platform, and that's Planet of Bangladesh. It's pretty surprising that uh, up to now, we have trained around 700 plus students in Bangladesh. We expanded in various dimensions. We launched the robotic internship program, first time in Bangladesh. And we started providing a part-time and full-time job on robotics. Thus, our dream was uh, to make intelligent profession like robotics in Bangladesh. We started visiting, visiting various schools and institutions with our robots, started attending talks to reach more and more people, and on 29 November 2012, we released a full robotic magazine. And you can see we distributed hundreds of copies of that magazine to spread around with robotics. <laughs> to us, success is watching our students' success. Many of our students, after getting trained from this training program, they uh, participated in national and international uh, 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 robotic competitions and won uh, awards, you can see here. And I want to show uh, one of our student robot, 
uh, which participated in a national robotic competition, and he managed to grab the first position there. <laughs> and really, that's our success, I think. I want to introduce with some of our silly robots. First of all, robotic arm. We designed a five degree of freedom robotic arm and added a four bar linkage mechanism to grip objects. Next, I want to introduce the obstacle avoider robot. Uh, during our office period, when we get bored uh, with our office duties, then we just uh, <laughs> keep on disturbing this robot in this way. <laughs> we used an ultrasonic uh, so uh, sound sensor um, in this robot to detect obstacles within three meters of its range. Now I want to talk about Lunobot. Back in May 2013, I participated in NASA's Kennedy Space Center at Florida, USA <laughs> with a lunar mining robot. That's my Lunobot. Uh, it's able to roam around in the lunar surface and collect lunar regolith and dump it into the collection bin. Uh, we used four independent wheels those wheels were casted with aluminum alloy and independently controlled. We used for wireless communication the IEEE A02.11 BGN, BGN uh, communication protocol. We used the two linear actuator. And look how the Lunobot works. Using its four individual uh, wheel, individually uh, controlled wood, and using these two linear actuators, it does its actuation work and collects sands. Not only its application is confined in the moon, we cannot go there easily, so we have to use it also in the Earth. Uh, we thought of not uh, limiting it into the lunar activities only, but also we can use it to collect garbages and uh, use it to collect sand uh, in the construction area, building construction area, uh, collect the sand from here and dump it there like that. Okay, I want to st uh, share one of <laughs> the story of my life. After I completed my graduation, uh, my family wanted me to enroll into a company job and live a life uh, with a risk-free financial condition. But you know what? Uh, I don't know why do I always like risk. I don't like a steady position. I like to uh, go th through adven an adventurous life. I managed a job somehow, and I got enrolled into it. After a month, I found out that I cannot do anything with concentration. So I went to my boss, and I was saying to him that, yeah, you know, I have a dream to make robots, uh, silly robots, whatever, uh, and do some sort of entrepreneurial activities in my country. But uh, that's why I just want to leave this job. So my boss thought that uh, his expression was like that, you go home, you're drunk. <laughs> so, um, so quickly I posted a happy selfie on my Facebook wall and posted a status there that I've left my job. Whoa, <laughs> I'm independent from now. But I was thinking about my mother that uh, when I will return home, <laughs> what will be the reaction? But uh, it was pretty wonderful to watch that he w she was uh, cleaning my lavatory after so long at my home. So from, uh, since then, the real entrepreneurial journey began. And uh, I would like to inform that Raki Breja, uh, who is currently the city of Planet of Bangladesh, he was very much fond of making uh, ro uh, science fiction uh, sci-fi sci robots, uh, like he was very much uh, fond of the famous movie uh, Transformer, where he saw that self-reconfigurable robot, and he got crazy on that, I've, I have to make this somehow. And uh, then both of us uh, sat together and decided to make the first self-reconfigurable robot in our life, and we named it Manov Gari. In Bangla, Manov means uh, human, and Gari means car. And, uh, we managed to make a human car. <laughs> That's a humanoid car. And what's this? We used uh, 11 digital servo motor to make another silly robot in our life. And uh, we went through a lot of mechanical stress analysis. And finally, we got this structure feasible for making that self-reconfigurable robot. 
uh, we developed our own servo motor controller with 18 channel and we controlled uh, the robotic uh, the the motors of that robot with that controller we used arduino mega bolt as the brain of that robot and this is the car shape of that robot and see how silly thing we made then <laughs> No, it somehow uh, managed to uh, do some sort of differential driving like this. And that was our first atom. Uh, we wish to make uh, an advanced self-reconfigurable robot in future. Finally, we thought of making something interesting, really, with uh, some sort of commercial aspects, and that's telepresence robot. You can see the prototype of the telepresence robot serving in a restaurant, uh, some uh, Thai soup there. That's the prototype, and, uh, the, and we control that robot via internet with our own developed Android application. And, uh, uh, the application area is actually, it can work as a virtual office, okay, then it can, you can see that it can serve as a waiter in the restaurant, but the main application for what we have made it was to help the disabled children in our country to reach the school for education. They can sit in the home and they can use the telepresence robot, they can uh, interact with the teacher and roam around in the school and uh, via this telepresence robot, they can uh, receive education sitting at home. So that was the main purpose we thought uh, for uh, behind making this robot. Now people uh, ask me often a question that what's your vision? Okay, I'm gonna explain it after. First of all, let me call Raki Brazier on stage. He is currently the CTO of Planter Bangladesh. So the vision uh, we set for ourselves is that we don't have any vision. Uh, let me just explain it. Uh, we think that if you have a vision, if you have a goal, target, mission, whatever, if you achieve that thing, your journey is over. Okay, then we don't want to uh, keep any barrier in our dream and activities. Uh, so, we do what? We just do what time demands from us. So, I want to uh, give a message from Planet of Bangladesh that let's not make your dream bordered. And let's expand your activities boundlessly. Thank you.